Can any of you guess why this photograph reminds me of my friend Max? Now he's not a train driver and he's never caused a railway accident. No, my friend Max is always going off the rails. In actual fact, Max is a train wreck. <laughs> and you might ask, so what's this got to do with the death of the mind? And the reason is, is that we understand ourselves in relation to our technology. No one ever went off the rails before the invention of the train. So when our technology changes, our psychology changes too. In one of the, in the most popular TED talk of all time, Ken Robinson talks about academics living in their heads. But we all live in our heads, don't we? We talk about looking within ourselves and finding inner peace. And this is the most fundamental assumption in the whole of modern psychology. The mind is an inner place, an inner space into which we can turn and listen to ourselves. And we assume that this has always been the case, and it's universal. Except it wasn't the case in the past, and it's not going to be the case in the future. I still remember uh, the first time I realised this. I was, um, I was a grad student, I was at university, and uh, I was reading ancient Stoic philosophy, as you do. <laughs> and uh, one of the Stoics, first century AD, so about 1900 years ago, Epictetus, and he's, he was writing this passage where he says, you must never lose focus. You must never lose attention. Not even for a second. And I thought, well, that's not really that realistic now, is it? Because uh, Max, by the way, is me. I'm always getting sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I felt kind of guilty for a while, and then I realised there's something different about this. Because the way the Stoics wrote about themselves, about their psychology, they never talked about this inwardness that we do. So I didn't feel that guilty because the psychology of people 2,000 years ago was very different. And I wanted to try and understand why that was. Why didn't they have the inwardness that you and I do, that comes natural to us? So I had to dig into the history. This is a, a mosaic of Plato's Academy. So it was very similar to what the Stoics would have had. It was about two and a half thousand years ago. And this is the philosophy which our Western civilization is built upon. This is Plato's Academy. A lot of their philosophy comes from this. But they didn't have the inwardness. All of these people in these times from before BC, there's very little inwardness. And in this picture, there is a little clue as to why that is. As you can see, it's an academy. So it's the equivalent of a university. Can you see any books? There is one book on the right-hand side. You see the guy in the white robe, and he's holding a scroll. And the scroll was the book in ancient times. And the thing is, if you think about it, a scroll is read like this. It's very hard to read a scroll on your daily commute. Very hard to read a scroll in the privacy of your bed at night. A scroll is meant to be declaimed. 
And that's the difference between the ancients and you and I. They read orally and socially. Reading for Plato, for Epictetus, was a social activity. And that's the first piece of the puzzle. This changed. This is the conversion of St. Augustine from 386 of the Christian era. As you can see, he's reading too, but it's pretty different. There has been an information technology revolution. Augustine is reading a codex. You could read that quite privately, quite silently to yourself. And that is what actually happened. This is the first record we have in history of somebody reading silently. Augustine opens the book and he hears the voice in his head. And Augustine is the first one to write about the mind in the way that you and I would understand. He talks about a palace of memory. He talks about his mind's eye. He talks about looking within himself. The simple change in technology has produced a psychological revolution. And that model of a book being read privately and silently is at the heart of our Western individualistic, private and interior mind. And things stayed like that for centuries. Punctuation, capitalization, spaces between words made it easy for you, you and I to read silently. That's where our mind comes from. And nothing changed until now. Nowadays we read very differently. We multitask across apps, across devices, and across all kinds of different programs. We don't have one Bible, we have many Bibles. We don't have definitive texts, we have hypertexts. We read in a very different way these days. And it would be very naive of us to assume that that is not going to have profound consequences on our psychology. It is inevitable that our singular individualistic interior mind will die. But what is not inevitable is what will come next. If we are weak, our technology could overtake us and divide us. But if we are strong, our technology can unite and support us. Because for humanity to overcome the many challenges we face today, from climate change to sustainable development to mass migration and cybercrime, we need a new mentality. A mentality which is selfless, collective and global. And we need, we need to develop our information technologies with those values built in. But we must learn from history. The unexamined mind is not worth living. So I'm asking you today to help me to help Max see that there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> One in which, a future in which we have reinvented the next generation of the human mind.